And it's time now to round up today's top stories in the exciting world of science with CTV science and tech expert Dan Riskin. Good morning, Dan. Good morning. Hey, Dan, good to talk to you this Monday morning. Uh, a new study apparently linking financial optimism and lower cognitive abilities. Explain the uh, hmm. disconnect some people seem to be having here. Yeah, this is really interesting. It's uh, data out of the UK where they had tens of thousands of people. They asked them for, they tracked them for 10 years. And every year they said, how much money do you think you're going to make next year? And then they, the next year, checked in with them and saw how much money they made. How much are you going to make next year? And th in addition to doing these questions, they also had them do these cognitive tests, basically a bunch of IQ tests. Hmm. And what they found is people that are scoring lower on the IQ scale are generally being super optimistic about how much money they're going to make and way more optimistic than reality. It's okay to be optimistic about how much money you're going to make if you actually make that much money. But what they found is that the people at the low end of those cognitive uh, tests were just really optimistic. And they mm. think this really points to how the brain works, that we're built with this optimism and this hope. And then we have these cognitive skills that really tell us, like, yeah, I should probably plan just in case that doesn't yeah. happen. Mm -hmm. right. and, uh, and so if you're somebody that worries about money, that just shows how smart you are. Mm. Uh, all right, I must be a genius. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and, I, and I'm curious if that translates to other areas of your life. Like, if you worry about everything all the time, does that make you extra smart? Because, you know, oh, fascinating stuff. Okay, Dan, turning to something out of this world, NASA came really close to turning the OSIRIS-REx asteroid sample into a crater in Earth, in the Earth. So what happened there? Yeah. Well, we got this sample back, and it looked like textbook beautiful. You know, it, 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 it was a mission that launched in 2006, and it came back. And, and this sample came down in a parachute and everything looked fine. But it turns out we came this close to the whole thing getting destroyed. Oof. When that thing came in from space at 31 kilometers up, 10 minutes before it was supposed to land, there was supposed to be a first parachute that opened to slow it down a little bit. Mm. But instead of the signal opening that parachute, it cut the line to that oh. parachute. And the parachute never came up. So it just kept coming down towards the Earth way too fast, then three kilometers above the Earth, the second chute opened, and thankfully it was strong enough to withhold the wow. huge forces. And then when it was supposed to cut the second, the first chute, it opened the first chute. So the first chute Whoa. just came flying out and did nothing. And it's just a miracle. It's not a miracle, it's good engineering and uh -huh. redundancy. But we're very lucky. It almost just came in. All that work was almost just oh. destroyed oh, no. as it hit the Earth. So we're, wow. we're and NASA is super embarrassed about this and trying to figure out exactly how that happened. But it's a good story for sure. Wow. It makes us really grateful that we have the sample we have. Yeah, no kidding. Oh my yeah, gosh. That's, 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 Do we know how heavy it was, or is that? I don't know what not. the mass mm. is, but okay. I know it was going. I think it was two, thirty times the speed of sound. Yeah. So uh, whatever it weighed, it was yeah. going to make a pretty yeah. good dent. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, quickly, Dan, uh, this last story about a Swedish study uncovering a paradox about people that are diagnosed with an excessive fear of serious illness. This is like beyond hypochondria. Well, this is hypochondria, okay. but mm -hmm. if you have hypochondria, what this study shows is that all the stress of worrying about the fact that you might die too soon actually shortens your lifespan. Mm. And so it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. They found that people who have hypochondria die about five years earlier on average than people who don't have hypochondria. So it's all the more reason to treat mm -hmm. that mental health problem because it can be self-fulfilling. Mm -hmm. So worrying about finances makes you smart. Worrying about early death makes you makes die, you die. Sooner. Yeah, <laughs> That's there what we learned this morning, yeah. Uh -huh. I think we should all take right. a line from uh, Team America. I will never die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, Dan Riskin, thanks so much. Have a great Christmas. We'll see you in a couple of weeks' time. Thanks, thanks. Dan.